you might notice my background here today. Um, you know, I'll just turn this around real quick so you guys can see where I am. Huh? Huh? Look at that. I don't know if you can see it because of the light, but look at that. Your sanctuary awaits you. <laughs> Completely social distanced and all. So, um, good morning. <laughs> yes, you've got a friend, you know, just call spirit's name. <laughs> call out and it is right there for you. So uh, our theme this month is Inclusion in Action. And my title this morning is Colorblind or Colorful? Do you have any colorful friends? And you know what I mean. And if, if you think you don't, you do. I'm one of them. I'm, I'm uh, what I would say is very colorful in the respect that um, sometimes I, I, um, I get crazy. Uh, not crazy, crazy, but uh, uh, I like to have fun. So um, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about being colorful or colorless. And I'd like you to imagine looking at a beautiful garden that has countless flowers with many different colors, textures, and heights, but not being able to see the variations in the colors because you're colorblind, and some people are. But if you were colorblind, things would look pretty monotone. That's the way it is with some people. If one embraces the idea of color blindness, you see, you don't see another person's differences or the nuances that make them uniquely them. So yes, you've got a friend and everyone is colorful if you will look for the color and not be um, put off by what they represent. The idea of being color blind might be considered as an inclusion or a noble one imbued with positive intentions. But the impact of color blindness is that you don't truly see the person for who they really are. Intent doesn't always consider impact. We'll say that again. Intent doesn't always consider the impact. And in this case, the impact of not being seen, felt or heard or distinguished from everyone else. See, everybody is unique. Everyone is a one of a kind. Our different life experiences make us different from each other. The concept of colorblindness excludes those differences. Colorfulness is inclusive. So let's continue with that garden analogy. What if there are only one type of flower in the garden without any variation of color. That's what sameness is. But that is not why we're here. We are not the same. Although we are spiritually all the same as we are God in form. We live in a world that is abundantly diverse with each of us expressing the divine in our own colorful way, as only you can, and you know who you are. That is what I love about being a religious scientist. You've got a friend in everyone, even those that might look different or feel different or hold different values. We know that everyone is divine. We get to think about the energy behind these things, the metaphysical, 
beyond the physical, physicality of us. We get to look into the inner being of each other. And religious scientists are friendly people. And religious scientists are colorful people. Religious science teaches us that each person is a unique expression of God. Each of us created with our own sacred worth. You, you have sacred worth. Everyone has sacred worth. So what about the people who don't believe as we do? What efforts do we take to embrace people who do not think like we do? Do we think that they're crazy, separate? Living from that awareness and embracing ideas that are different has the potential to transform our lives and our world. That's why we're going through this interesting time right now is to show how different we are and to be okay with it. Color blindness is opposed to those ideas. Ernest Holmes wrote in the Beverly Hills lectures from 1952, unity and uniformity are not the same thing. No two blades of grass are alike. What does this mean spiritually? We have nothing to disprove and everything to prove that this individualization of the spirit in each one of us, rooted in common soil, having the characteristics and potentialities of its common background, contain what the ancient called the microcosm. We have it every reason to suppose that there is back and within all around every individual the divine representation of himself as the son of god forever expanding each one of us each one of us the son or daughter of the infant ever expanding Oneness is not sameness. If diversity, decisions, and efforts at inclusion do not include a serious and open discussion for color blindness, including the many ways those realities intersect, incongruity will continue to exist. Colorblind ideologies are problematic because they specifically in, you ignore our uniqueness and the experiences that make us all different. Some might even refer to this as a spiritual bypass. You ever heard that? A spiritual bypass. Um, it's easy and it requires no effort on our part to get to know people as individuals and to treat them the way that they wish to be treated. Some differences make a difference to certain people and pretending that they don't exist denies us of what makes us the distinct expression of the creative spirit that we are. Unity is oneness, not sameness. Again, unity is oneness, not sameness. Unless we really understand the differences between us, we'll never develop oneness. We'll only keep drifting towards people like ourselves, towards sameness. And sameness in a garden, and the garden of life, is a pale limit, imitation of our spiritual oneness. So let's continue again with this garden as a metaphor for diversity and inclusion. 
The metaphor of a garden might be better explained colorblindness regarding diversity, inclusion, and oneness. Again, imagine a garden containing various vegetables and fruits and vegetation, flowers and foliage and trees. All vegetation needs a conducive environment to flourish. A suitable pH level, a healthy level of exposure to air and water, healthy nutrients. While all plants need sun, shade, and nutrients, soil, and water, and care, different plants require different mixtures of these elements to thrive. Some need shade, while others need more sun. Some need moist soil, while others thrive in drier or more sandy soil, like succulents. Nature shows us the diversified forms of expression of the common life. Science admits the diversity and seeks to recognize the one great principle, the life, the life that lives within all. The diversity lies in the expression of our human spheres. The sameness lies in the source for all things are God, expressing as the countless life forms that we experience on this plane of existence in this world of form. This is the same for people, for our friends. While one subset of inclusion, inclusive behavior will work for one person, another may positively respond to another set. People, though we are the same biologically speaking, all have different needs, different interests, life experiences and circumstances that make us who we are. Treating people the same dishonors those differences. Treating, treating people equitably meaning that we meet them where they are, demonstrates our appreciation and value of the beautiful, unique flower that each one of us is. You've got a friend, and each friend is different. And we treat our friends differently sometimes, don't we? Although we love them all, some friends like to talk more than others. Some are better listeners. Our very differences may serve as the catalyst or the conduit through which our authentic relationships are formed. We may find that our differences enhance our connections, which is not to say that we don't have numerous commonalities, which can also deepen the intimacy between us. Intimacy into me see intimacy see the depth in each flower in each rose petal in each person in each situation so remember we are connected with those that are different there's only one of us here it's the divine expressing. It is a common theme in our world today that if someone doesn't believe or think or even look like we do, they could not possibly be connected to us. And this is to miss the divine message within our teaching. We assume separation. But people who disagree draw lines in the sand rather than learning how, how to be part of the other's point of view. Can we observe with love and can we respond with love regardless? People with different worldviews seem to never share a coffee or have lunch together. 
Why is that? Even those who hang out or befriend another of a different religion or political stance or philosophical view are told that they are watering down their own beliefs and stances. It seems that all too often we think that we have to be exactly the same, colorblind, or we cannot be together at all and be the colorful beings we were created to be. We were told not to talk of political or religion in mixed company. So what about politics? What about those Democrats or those Republicans or those independents or those fill in the blank? Or the people of color or of different sexual orientations than you? Can you stand in their shoes? Can you see the colorfulness in all God's creations? Can we, instead of trying to change someone's worldview, see it as part of the colors of the rainbow and just observe with love? Can you observe with love? And it's challenging. Just take that extra second when somebody has uh, pushed your button to understand that they didn't implant that button in you. They're just bringing up what already is sensitive. Can we see it differently? But we can't just stand by and observe when someone is being hurt physically or otherwise. We need to say something. Sometimes we need to do something. Usually if someone is lashing out, it's because of their own inner hurting. That is where they are in consciousness. Let's not dehumanize people who appear to be different than us. Let's make the effort to see the big picture. Take a divine stance and invite in the presence of spirit. So in conclusion, if we are really interested in instilling oneness, we need to be with other people who are different from us to experience a loving, unified relationship with the divine. Love pushes us to widen our circle of inclusion and reach out to others who are different from us. We shouldn't assume that we will all think, believe, or pray, or sing, or dress, or talk the same or behave exactly the same way to be liked. In fact, we're challenged to embrace the differences, the disagreements, and the uniqueness. Why? Because in that kind of inclusive, diverse, and authentic way, we get a glimpse of what oneness truly is. The nature of God's Great creation is one of complete diversity. Let's not be colorblind. Let's be colorful, wonderful, and mystical, embracing the variances of spirit that we are created to be. And so it is. Well, it's time for our prayer now. So if you'd like to just take a moment and Go within and connect to what you believe the power of creation is to you. Just taking a breath in, I remind myself that there is a power that is animating each one of us. It's animating the plants, even the rocks are animated with the energy of spiritual consciousness. And I know that that same energy that creates worlds is creating this moment. It is breathing our body and beating our heart, causing all the flowers in the garden to be 
different. And each one of us is different, but anchored in that same life. Nature is truly the love of the universe expressing itself, and here we are, part of the natural experience of the divine creative process. So I speak my word into that with love and power. I may not know what you're walking through right now, but I know God does. And as we connect with what we choose to believe creative energy is for us individually, we invite in the healing. We invite in the revealing. We invite in the answers, the calm and the peace and the understanding. We invite in the resolution to things that may have challenged us for lifetimes. I know, and I invite you to know that something wonderful is happening by means of each one of us, that there is a healing happening right here and right now in the midst of what we're walking through collectively and individually, that something powerfully transformative is happening. And I allow that energy of spirit to be present in every moment, in every situation, and allow the healing energy, that miraculous love of the universe, to wash in as an elixir in every situation. So we give great thanks. Our heart over flows with the love of the universe and spills out into every situation in our lives, healing and revealing that truth. It is easy to let go and let God, let spirit be spirit in our lives. I release this word directly into that living, loving law of mind where I know it is doing exactly what it has come here to do, as each one of us is each one of us. So I let go and I let God be the spiritual energy of all that is, as we affirm this together by saying, and so it is, amen. Well, again, thank you for joining us today. It's time for our offertory. So I would uh, invite you to take your offertory in your hand, in your heart, in your mind, and find your, your donate button or fill out your check. But we're going to bless everything that's been given, everything that will ever be given, and what you're choosing to give right now. So let's repeat our um, affirmation for our offertory today. And it goes like this. My abundance is another way of the divine expressing my sacred worth. Once again, my abundance is another way of the divine expressing my sacred worth. And so it is. Amen.